We are now joined by Danny Sabatello. First question, King Nolan. Danny, congratulations on the win. Um, talk to me, man. How good did that one feel? Yeah, that was fucking awesome. Um, obviously, anytime I can rile up the crowd, whether they're on my side or not on my side, I don't give a fuck. You know, the booze were music to my cauliflower ears. That was fucking awesome. What I did specifically like about this fight was in that second round, I faced some adversity. I had a guy like Higo on my back who's an absolute killer on somebody's back. I weathered that storm. I got up. I smiled. I was happy I got out of it. And then I just pushed forward to the next rounds and absolutely fucking dominated him. You know, he built up some fucking fucking aggression, some momentum, getting that second round victory, and I didn't give one fuck. I had all the fans against me. I had everybody against me. I didn't give a fuck. I went out there, and I still fucking dominated him. You can call it whatever the fuck it is. There's my boy Johnny. He just got the fucking belt, baby. ATT went 5-1 and one tonight, and we're going to be even better, baby. Let's go. More gold to ATT. Now, obviously going into this, you said you thought you were in his head. Did you feel like when you were in there, there were things that he was doing? Like, did, were you uh, justified in your assessment beforehand? Yeah, you know, I get in these guys' heads before these fights. I, I very much believe in mental warfare. Um, obviously, I felt like I was in his head before the fight. I saw it in his eyes. Once we got into that cage, he was a little bit timid, a little bit cautious. Even in that first round, I was pressing forward right away, and he was kind of shelling up. Um, I took him down. He didn't really make too many risks or do too much in the first round. Um, and that second round in the beginning, he was kind of holding on to my gloves. He was very scared in there. Um, one thing I did do when I broke him was after that second round and he did win that when I came back and showed I don't give a fuck I'm still coming for your head. He slowly started a break and I fucking broke him You can say whatever the fuck you want about this fight. You could say it's boring I don't give a shit what the fuck you say, but I straight dominated him and he goes a fucking animal And for me to dominate an animal that just shows how fucking good I am Stotts doesn't stand a chance you said this was music to your cauliflower ears here in the booze. Uh, why, like, what is that about you that makes that the case? I think a lot of people would probably think they have to do something different or they're not pleasing the fans enough. Why do you like it? Why do you enjoy I it? I just feed off excitement. I feed off pressure. I just feed off emotion. That's just what I am. I'm an emotional guy. I'm always fucking motivated. I need people to either give me the fucking bird, flick me off, tell me I fucking suck, or love me. It doesn't matter. But I love when people are acknowledging me. You know, it's going to be a very exciting time for Danny Sabatello fans because it feels like we got the whole fucking world against us. But all we do is win so we can just give a middle finger right back. You know, there's going to be a lot of people on this fake Instagram and Twitter world that's going to be talking shit. Of course, wouldn't say shit to my face. They'll ask for autographs. But all the Danny Sabatello fans can tell them to go fuck themselves because we won tonight and we're going to party like fucking champions tonight. Fight promotion continues. You already know who you got next. They brought Rafi on in the, in the cage. You guys kind of had some words. What'd you think of his energy? He seems pretty fired up for this one. Seems like everybody's pretty fired up for this one. Nah, he seemed like a little bitch to me. Um, I don't know what everybody else thought, but I just am going to smoke that motherfucker. You know what? When you face a guy like Kigo and has really good submissions on the ground, you kind of do have to be a little bit careful. You really got to be smart because he's waiting for you to slip up a little bit. He's a guy that conserves a little bit of energy. And then right when he gets you, he squeezes the fuck out of you. So you got to be very careful. So with him, I couldn't take too many risks. I had to play it smart. When I got a guy like Stotts, I don't have to be smart because that guy can't finish fucking anybody, dude. He's not a finisher. He doesn't pose a threat to me on the feet. He's not going to knock me out. He doesn't pose a threat to me on the ground. He's not going to submit me. So it's just going to free for all fucking fight. And it's just going to be two guys beating the shit out of each other. Actually, scratch that. I take that back. That's going to be one guy beating the shit out of the other guy. And that's what I'm going to do to him is beat the shit out of him. And I don't have to fight smart. I can be free. I don't got to be boring. I could do whatever the fuck I want to this guy because he's a bum. Congrats on the win, Danny. So, Danny, so after the fight, I saw that you and Leandro, you know, embracing after that. Did, did you guys share any words after to kind of squash the beef? Yeah, it's tough because he doesn't speak English. Um, so even during this whole fucking build up to this uh, fight, it's just tough. You can't really get too much going with uh, the Portuguese and the English. But after I did go over there and I said, you know, uh, respect or something like that. I can't remember what I said, but I also went over to his coaches. Um, you know what? When I'm done with my food, I'm done playing with it. Um, I don't really give a shit. Um, I don't know if we'll ever see eye to eye again. I really take missing weight seriously. I don't like that he missed weight, but you know what? 
it's all squashed. I already beat him. I beat the shit out of him. I dominated him. Um, I don't know if he's ever going to like me. I don't know if I'll ever like him, but it, it's more so just it, it's in the past. I don't see a reason to just keep harping on it. You know, I'm not going to rub it in his face. That's not what I do. Um, I already have my eyes set on Stotts. Right when that bell rang, I didn't really even give a fuck about Higo anymore. I was just picturing Stotts. And to tell you the truth, my coaches are going to get mad at this, but in that fifth round, I started picturing Stotts. I got ahead of myself against Higo, and I just started picturing Stotts and what I'm going to do to this motherfucker, and I'm going to bash Stotts' fucking face in. 100%. And uh, Danny, so you know, what's the post-fight celebration looking like for you know Team ATT? I saw you and John Houston race, but anything planned for the night after that huge W? Uh, yeah, uh, and listen closely because I don't want this to get confusing or anybody to misunderstand this. I am getting absolutely hammered tonight, fucked up. Only drinking. I don't do drugs, so anybody that says blah, blah, blah. I don't do drugs, but I'm getting absolutely fucking hammered tonight. And so is Johnny, and we deserve it because we had great performances. He just got the fucking belt, and all the American top team should be celebrating tonight because we had a great fucking night, and we're only going to continue and get better from here. Will the celebration continue when you get back down to Fort Lauderdale with the ATT boys? I will be fucked up for two weeks straight, yeah, 100%, because I'm going to be going down to Fort Lauderdale, obviously celebrate with my crew, and then I'm going back to Chicago, going back to celebrate with my Chicago crew. So it's just going to be a fucking fun-ass two weeks ahead. I don't know when that Stotts is going to be um, fought. I, I don't know if they announced the fight or not. Did they announce when it'll be? No? So, yeah, I don't know when that'll be. Um, again, I don't want to get too carried away because if I once I start partying, I'll just go on a bender and I'll just lose myself. But I'm surrounded by fucking great people that if I did get a little bit out of control, I got people to put me right back in my place. I got coaches, teammates, family, friends, everybody to say, you know what, time to get right back to the fucking gym. And so I'm not too worried about that. But obviously, you got to fucking celebrate, man. This is a crazy fucking sport. Wins are so hard to come by. You got a legend like Musashi that just lost in there tonight. Um, obviously, take the fucking wins. Be happy. Just love yourself. You know what? I'm so fucking confident. Nobody loves me more than I love me. You know what? I'm my own best friend. My mom's actually my best friend, but if you tried her chicken parmesan, she'd be your best friend too. But you got to be your own best friend. You got to fucking love yourself. Enjoy the fucking victories. Um, again, yeah, it's going to be a fun ass night. And you mentioned Evelyn. Of course, you know the result, but your teammate, he just defeated a legend in Musasi, got the middleweight uh, world title. Did you happen to watch the fight, and what did you make of his performance? Yeah, I was in the back. Um, my phone was obviously blowing up, but I didn't fucking acknowledge anybody yet. The only person I called was my parents. Um, so I was just so zoned in on Johnny. You know, me and Johnny are really close. We wrestled in college together. He wrestles at Missouri. I wrestled at Purdue. Uh, we came into ATT around the same time. He was there maybe a year before me. So we've always just been really close. Um, and honestly, I'm going to tell you, this is not a shock to me, and this is not a shock to anybody in the American top team. Johnny Eblen is a stud. He's not just going to win that belt that he did tonight. He's going to hold on to the belt for a long time. He's very good. Um, and, yeah, he, he's my boy. He's fucking great. I'm so glad we both were on the same card together. You know what? It was just like three years ago. We were in ATT. And we didn't know how to throw a fucking punch. We didn't know what jujitsu was. I heard Muay Thai. I thought it was a fucking type of noodle. I didn't know what the fuck it was. Um, and now you look at us now. I'm co-main. He's main. And we both fucking won tonight. And you've already spoken a lot about Rafian Stotts in the hour since uh, your fight. but And you called him a bum. But a lot of fans, they feel that he poses a bigger threat than Jornel or Higo did to you. Would you agree that he is a more skilled fighter than your previous opponents. No. Also, you're forgetting to mention a lot of fans are fucking idiots. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Stotts is actually an insanely great matchup for me. With Higo, it neutralizes everything with his jiu-jitsu because he can finish me at any point. So I can dominate a guy like that for 25 minutes, but all he needs is a split second to snatch up my neck, my arm, my leg, and the fight's over, it's done. You know, this isn't football where it's like, oh, you fucking, you missed a block, okay, he gains an extra yard, or basketball, he fucking puts a ball in a hoop, it's two points, who gives a fuck? This is a game where you make one fucking mistake, your lights are out, sayonara. So, obviously, you gotta be smart against a guy like that, but again, a guy like Stotts, dude, just fucking smash him. If I make a mistake, no big deal. What the fuck's he gonna do? He's not gonna finish me. So I'm very much looking forward to beating the shit out of his face. And we know the Pitbull brothers were behind Higo all week and in his corner, but you had your own Pitbull in your corner in the form of bare-knuckle middleweight champion Tiago Alves. How important was it to have your uh, all these guys from ATT in your corner all week, but 
more specifically Mike Brown and Tiago Alves. Dude, I just feed off their fucking energy. I got the best coaches in the world. You look at Mike Brown and Tiago Alves, I got that in my fucking corner. I also got my boy here in my corner. Uh, it's just, you know, I got people behind me that really care about me, and that's just more so of uh, feeding off their energy and bringing more motivation into this fight. As long as I know I got these guys that have my back, there's no way I can lose, dude. Look at my fucking coaches. Look at my fucking teammates. How am I going to lose if I'm going to the best gym every single day, twice a day, and I'm training with the best people? And look at my God-given ability. I'm going to be taller than everybody here. I can use range. I'm faster than everybody here. I got the best cardio in MMA. Dude, I can't lose. The only way I lose is if I get fucking dumb. So I just got to stay smart and just beat the fuck out of these guys. We're going to take a question from the Zoom. Jay? Hey, thanks very much. Danny, congratulations on the win tonight. Now on to Stotts, and with Stotts comes the interim title. I'm just curious how you look at that belt. We've seen Justin Gagey famously throw his down, say, I want the real thing. Is that the real title between you and Stotts, or is it Sergio when all this is said and done? Stotts is the champion of this division right now. I don't want to hear shit about Sergio Pettis. He's a pussy. He couldn't even make it to the battlefield. I think he pulled his ACL or some shit. I don't know. I, I don't, he might have retired. I don't know. Stotts is, a little, Stotts is also a little bitch, but Pettis is a fucking little bitch. He is not the champion. Stotts has that belt, and I'm going to take it from him. This is not an interim title fight my next fight. This is a title fight. So the winner of this fucking fight is going to be the bantamweight champion, and it's the same thing with winning the tournament. The winner of this tournament is the best bantamweight on planet Earth. And when we talk about the tournament and the final patchy mix, Megomed Megomedov, who do you see making the final on the other side of the bracket? Yeah, it's a slop fest. They're not very, they're both not very good. You know, my side of the bracket was obviously the strong side. Um, patchy sucks. Um, he's not very good. He gets on your back and he gets that triangle and he's pretty good with that triangle on the body lock. That's what he did against Kyoji. But if he doesn't get there, he looks like a fish out of water. He's a fucking bum. So I think uh, Magomed wins, but to be honest with you, I, I don't really give one fuck. Um, it's going to be me winning the whole tournament. But obviously, first, I only got to think about Stotts beating the shit out of him and then whoever gives a fuck i mean like whoever wins that fight i'm gonna smash anyways all right well congrats on the win and enjoy the celebration thank you nathan next question danny congratulations on your win um you said on wednesday that you wanted to be the face of bellator how do you do that I just keep being Danny Sabatello. You know, I'm very fortunate to have a very exciting personality. You know, I think fans are dumb, but they're intelligent enough to understand if somebody's fake and cheesy and corny and putting on a shtick. I think people understand that I'm not one of those guys that just says some bullshit, that script shit, that stutters all the time because they have shit written out. I'm a guy that's just myself. Um, and I'm just very exciting inside the cage and outside the cage. You know, tonight might have been boring, but go fuck yourself. What are you going to do about it? No one's going to do shit about it. I've said this a lot of times. I'm not a fucking guy, hard guy to find. Look at my hair. Look at my crazy tan. You can find me and you can tell me whatever you want, but it's funny. The same people that are booing are asking for autographs. So, again, back to your question. All I got to do is just keep being me, keep fucking winning, keep winning, and keep beating the shit out of people. All right, that concludes our time. Thank you.